519 at Cape Hill, Go Acadiana with Ken Romero and Dr. John. And joining us on the phone this afternoon is Captain Clay Higgins. Clay, it's been a, a tumultuous uh, few days for you. Are things settling down a little bit? Well, I mean, my my heart is is a little broken. Ken, you're my friend. You know me pretty well. I'm I'm uh, saddened for my for the turmoil that that my sheriff and and, and my brothers and sisters at the St. Landry Parish Sheriff's Office are going through because of because of what has has taken place. But me personally, I'm. I'm in a very peaceful place in the world because I've, I've followed my my heart and from prayerful reflection. I've done what I felt was right, and I'm confident that uh, I'm on the path that that I'm supposed to be on. And I know that my future will be bright because it's illuminated by God's light. Well, you know, and and the thing is, I, I know there's a difference in you today than yesterday morning. You you were confident and and very calm. You're calm and confident now, but you you sound a little. I, I, I don't know. Maybe the turmoil has gotten to you a little bit. That you know there will be some changes coming, but you've got to be overwhelmed by all the support you've gotten on Facebook, the phone calls you've gotten. So many people came out in favor of you, and including everybody that I know, and, and including so many of, of the ministerial and so many people that were black and so many people that were white. And, and you know, some people, it, I don't know, thought that the issue that was brought up was, was more of a, a racial thing. And I know that's not true. And I know you had the best for the community in mind. But we, we wanted to talk to you about what created, and excuse me for saying this, the legend of Clay Higgins, because until you started doing these Crime Stopper videos, Nobody knew who in the heck you were. What brought you to that point in your life? Well, Ken, I was, I don't know how far back you want to go with that, but I I was, before I became a civilian police officer in 2004, um, I had been a successful businessman for many years. And and I, I was successful in the way that, that, you know, modern society, a large parts of it, measures success. I had money. I had a nice home. In fact, I had two of them. And, you know, I, I drove the nicest cars and and ate at the fanciest restaurants. And, you know, I had the trappings of success. Right. Um, but I was, a, my spirit over the course of years, became unsettled with the life that I was living. I was I was just not a, a good man, Ken. I, I I didn't honor my wedding vows. I wasn't a good father. I worked too much. I drank too much. I wasn't the Christian I was supposed to be. I just wasn't the man that, that I knew that that God had destined for me to be. Mm. And, and I I gradually reached a point to where, in 2004, I was living in St. Landry Parish. I just moved to, I'd moved to St. Landry Parish in 2002 to, to run a business there. And I decided to change my life. I yeah. essentially took a vow of poverty and became a civilian police officer. I went from earning a, a great deal of money um, to earning eight dollars an hour wow and it, it was it was uh it was the best decision i've ever made in my life I, I gradually over the course of a few years you know it was from that that difficulty that trial and tribulation of of you know financial struggles that i discovered the man that had been in there and and I just became a decent man, and and I became, a, and I was a very successful police officer, and I worked for Larry Kaye, mm-hmm. at OPD, and all my friends and brothers and sisters at OPD, and and uh, I ended up, you know, I made the SWAT team pretty quick, and I just became a successful street cop. I was a street cop, yeah, uh, SWAT guy, and 
and my life just became very full of joy. Mm. And I got very close with my children, and and it was in that time period that my the mother of my children had had left me and divorced me years before, and rightfully so, mm-hmm. rightfully so. But um, during this period of rebuilding. I suppose when I was worthy, uh, the Lord introduced me to my wife. And Clay, that I'm, I'm married to now, Miss Becca. Yeah, Clay. You know, with with uh, all the videos that you've done for Crime Stoppers, some people I think may have been kind of taken aback by the fact that you praise God so much, and so I'm sure that's why the ACLU jumped in on the case because of, of your mentioning of of Christ and everything. And you know, I personally thought your messages were very positive. And knowing you as I do, you are the man that we see on television. You, you tone it down a little bit delivery. You're, you're not quite as aggressive as you are on television, but you are that Christian man who wants to help other people. And uh, I, I think that's tremendous. Well, yeah, I hope that that's, <clears throat> that that's the man that I am. I, I have, you know, I come from a background, as I've clearly stated to anyone that cares to listen, I'm a failed and fallen man that has gradually rebuilt himself over the course of the last 15 years to become a decent man. And I'm, and, and this is what makes my principles strong, mm-hmm. that I'm, I'm just not going back there, man. Yeah. I'm not going back to a guy that will sacrifice his principles over anything. I'd rather die. Yeah. And the ACLU, you know, they need to understand the difference between terminology that says freedom of religion because they think it's freedom from religion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, when a man puts on his badge, he doesn't give it up, give up his constitutional rights. And I support the ACLU's right to exist. And but they obviously didn't research me because I'm known within law enforcement circles as a champion of constitutional rights and and penitentiary reform and prisoners' rights and the and the sacred duty of every cop to unwaveringly recognize the constitutional rights of the citizens that we're sworn to serve and protect. Yep. So, you know, the ACL, you can say what they want, but they picked the wrong target. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. You know, uh, this is Dr. John here, and we appreciate you being on with us today. Clay Higgins joining us, talking a little bit. I guess over the years of you being a cop, there's probably a lot of stories, a lot of people o- over the over your life. What are some that kind of stick out as people that you've kind of you know, you, through prayer, through God's help, have sort of rescued from the streets. Give us an example of a couple of stories like that. Well, partner, there's, my history is replete with with interactions as a street cop, particularly a night shift cop, mm-hmm. which I was for many years. The, the night shift cop is the guy that really sees his fellow Americans at their most challenging point. Sure. And and I, it, there was not a night that passed that something amazing didn't happen where, where I was, you know, by destiny or, or by God's will, I was in the exact place where I needed to be and dispatched to the particular call where I needed to be and where God's word needed to be. Mm-hmm. And... And, it, it, you know, you ask me whose lives I, I've helped turn around. <clears throat> I've, I've had positive interactions with so many, but, but partner, they've helped me turn my life around. Yeah. Because, you see, it's impossible to be uplifting without being uplifted. Right. So every night when something positive would have happened and I was able to, to touch the lives of, of a family that had been violated in some way or, you know, a woman that had been beaten or a disturbed teenager or or, or a, a suspect, mm-hmm. that a fellow child of God that had fallen to drugs or alcohol or both mm-hmm. or, or just had been beaten down by life or perhaps raised in a, in a, a crime-ridden neighborhood and really didn't have that kind of opportunities that perhaps we did. And, yeah. and you know, but still, a, a child of God subject to redemption nonetheless. Right. So across the spectrum of the people that I would meet responding to a, 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 
criminal incident as a night shift cop, I, I had the opportunity to interact with so many that we that some of these people are dear friends now. Yeah. And and that some of uh, you know, we've 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 stuck together for many years as friends and confidants and and some of them started off very young. That's where Uncle Clay came from. Yeah. From a very early point, I, when I would respond to a call, if there was a, a young child or a young teenager there that looked lost and confused and frightened, you know, I would always try and take a knee and 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 try and touch his children's soul, and I would I would tell them, I said, I'm your uncle Clay. Hmm. I want you to think of me that way. I'm uncle Clay. No. Yeah. And to this day. You know, some of those people, some of those children have grown up, have children of their own, and they'll they'll see me in Walmart or something, and come and and say, Uncle Clay, Uncle Clay, and <laughs> my wife will say, Who was that? And I'll say, it's Probably somebody I arrested here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be thought of that way, Clay, and and you know, we wish you the best in the future, and I know you've got a lot of a prayer and reflection to do, and and we. We thank you for taking time to be with us today, and we urge you to stay in touch so we can uh, keep up with the future endeavors of Clay Higgins. Thank you, Ken. I'm 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 not going away, man. I'm dedicated to the, the citizens of St. Landry Parish and Acadiana. I'm not moving. I know the Lord will reveal His His, his mission for me, and I'm and I'm I'm just I'm prayerfully, patiently, joyfully awaiting his clear messages. All right. Thank you very much, Clay Higgins. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Goodbye. That was incredible. Very good. Yeah, very good. And, you know, he's always a positive person, but you can tell that the turmoil has gotten to him. He's, you can tell he's doing some soul searching. Very, absolutely. Very somber, very somber interview. Very, very good man to have on hand. I'll tell you that. We'll take a break. We got Todd Starnes coming up. Hope you'll stick around.